Now, the show last night was pretty bad. I'm going to very quickly go over everything here. And then I've got a I've got something I want to do on the program today. Oh, yeah. So it opens up with Hunter coming out, and he's interrupted by Randy Orton, and Randy Orton wants to be handed the championship or given number 30 in the Royal Rumble because he was supposed to have a non-title match, by the way, with Drew McIntyre that got canceled. This leads to the announcement that Randy Orton and Triple H are going to have a fight in the main event of the show. They recap the Charlotte deal from last week. The story now is that Rick claimed that he attempted to trip Payton and accidentally tripped Charlotte Flair. So keep that in mind for later on. We have the Drew McIntyre PSA. Charlotte faces Lacey, and at the end of the match, it's no accident. Charlotte hits the finish that she does, the natural selection. Rick takes Lacey's leg and puts it on the ropes. Charlotte is distracted. She tells Rick to get out of there. Lacey is in, she's on the apron. Charlotte goes to suplex her back in. And Ric Flair grabs the foot and then holds down Charlotte's foot. So Lacey pins Charlotte. And Ric Flair and Lacey Evans are now together in storyline. Apparently he's a regular on Raw from this point forward managing Lacey Evans. My mind was blown. So was Byron's, by the way. So, like in storyline, he's never watched wrestling. Keith Lee does a promo. Sheamus shows up. They agree to tag up later. To face Miz and Morrison. Jeff Hardy faces Jackson Riker for the fifth, no, the sixth straight week on Raw. Jeff Hardy does a job, and then he immediately challenges Elias, and Jeff Hardy beats Elias. So the the losing streak has been broken, but they still made him do a job for some reason to this Jackson Riker character. Sheamus and Keith Lee face Morrison and Miz. They do the match, they work together. Sheamus gets a blind tag, he hits the bro kick, he gets the pin. Keith Lee and Sheamus, they hug, they smile, they're so happy, and we go to break. We come back for a Hunter promo, and then they cut back to the ring, and Sheamus and Keith Lee are still in the ring together, but now they're angry at each other! And they're shoving, and they're fighting, and this leads to them having a singles match. They don't take 30 seconds to explain why they're fighting, what happened during the break. The announcers are out there. They've got no idea. So these two dudes just have a match. Keith Lee pins Sheamus, and then they hug again. Now, yes, I can figure out the story if I make my own storyline up in my head, but they did nothing to explain any of this. It was just a random thing that happened leading to a match and then afterwards they were just buddies again we have drew mcintyre accepting the challenge for the royal rumble t-bar beats xavier woods after interference from retribution t-bar on twitter said we're gonna beat somebody up tonight who do you think it's gonna be i thought for sure ricochet well that bloke can't even be on the show he's nowhere to be seen They've moved on now, I guess, to the New Day. And they did get a win, so a big congratulations to them. Lashley obliterated Matt Riddle. He beat him pillar to post. He ruined this guy. He bloodied him up, and then he beat him clean in the middle. And then this clown, Matt Riddle, challenges MVP afterwards, much like we saw earlier in the show, by the way. But... Unlike Jeff Hardy, Matt Riddle can't beat MVP. He gets beaten down again, disqualification finish, and they absolutely ruin this guy. Remember when they offered him a new deal? I don't think he's signed yet. Just want to throw that out there. AJ Styles is with Adam Pearce. This leads to AJ versus Drew Gulak. If Gulak wins, he gets a slot in the Royal Rumble. He doesn't win. Adam Pierce tells him, you can't just declare, which, by the way, leads two segments later to Dana Brooke and Mandy Rose just declaring, and now they're in the Royal Rumble. We have a history of Goldberg video package from 1999, which actually was one of the best things on the entire show. We had a Hunter Keith Lee segment where Hunter says, I made this mess. I got to clean it up. He didn't make the mess, actually. He had nothing to do with any of this. Randy Orton did, but Hunter's going to clean it up. Uh, Mandy and Dana face Shayna and Nia. If you've been watching the show, like, who could possibly care? Well, they get beaten again. So they declared for the Rumble, went in, 
got beaten by the tag team champions, like just two fellas or ladies. And Nia, of course, upset at a blind tag by Shayna. I mean, bro, do we have to see this in every segment? It's like Pritchard's got one idea, and we got to see it 30 times on every show. And finally, Triple H and Orton have their match. It goes three minutes. The lights go out. Triple H vanishes off the face of the earth. The lights go out. They come back on. He's gone. Like, what happened to Triple H? This should be concerning, but apparently nobody cares. And then Alexa Bliss looks at Randy, and she shoots a Roman candle into his face. And he rolls around on the mat for 45 excruciating seconds before this show goes off the air. So this is what we're going to do on the show today. A few weeks ago, I opened up a phone line, well, several phone lines, and I only wanted you to call if you were going to defend Raw, okay? We're not going to do that this week, okay? What we're going to do in the next segment is I'm going to open up the phone lines. Do not be a gimmick. If you don't have a defense, just don't call. I, I would prefer nobody called than you calling and pretending, but what I want is for you to call if you like this stuff with The Fiend. If you think that The Fiend is just the coolest character and these storylines with fire and magic, if you think this stuff is so good, I just want you to call. Because, quite frankly, especially if you're watching in 4K right now, bro, I'm old, okay? I'm 45 years old. This stuff... Whoosh, straight over my head. I don't get it. And I don't understand how anybody could like it. So what I want is, if you do like it, I want you to call and I want you to tell me why. I've heard vague rumblings. Oh, it's the, it's the Joker and Harley Quinn and this and that. Bro, if, if you believe this, if you like this, and you want to try to make some comparison or defend it in some way, I'm begging you to call. But I'm not begging for you to be a gimmick. I'm begging you for, to, for, for you to call into the show if you believe this. If you really like, if you really like this stuff with The Fiend, call me and tell me why. That's the only calls I'm allowing for the next segment. So if there's no one out there, just don't call. But the phone number, 844-913-2727. I'll open the phone lines during the break. Only call if you think this stuff is good. And then we'll open the lines to other stuff in the final segment. But I see Mike has got something now that he's very proud of. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. I am. Very much. Um, this might be the only time you get a chance to speak, so I'd like to, to thank the Academy here. Look at that. Uh, for the prediction contest winner, because I am a prognosticator and not a fool. Bro, you may have 12 minutes to talk, because I can't imagine anybody calling. Oh, yeah. But we'll be back after the break. Observer Live. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the Join button, sign up today. You can also click Subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.